Warning, this video may contain content that may not be suitable for children or anyone else that is easily offended. Strong language, graphic content, nudity, bad jokes, and a possible idiot, aka myself, may be featured in the following clip. Viewer discretion is advised. You're not responsible for any damage that you receive watching this video. <laughs> Y'all, it's Zims, and welcome back to another SCP reaction video. Today, we're gonna react to SCP 181. This video is by Dr. Bob, so you guys are already super busy. My car link wants to visit entirety because I'm gonna be positive, stopping and talking to the whole thing. Thank you so much for all the support, man. We're right around the corner from 6,500. Keep doing what you guys are doing, and the videos will keep coming. This SCP is called Lucky, so I'm guessing he's gonna have a lot of luck, man, considering they're in a casino, or maybe he's it's like luck, but it comes with a price tag, kind of like when people sell their souls, kind of like you get all you want, but on the back end, you're losing, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, I'll give you what you want for now, but what are you gonna pay me later, kind of thing. But for now, let's get it. Ah, ah, ah. Oh. 23, bust, the dealer says before scooping up the cards from in front of the man who appears to be growing increasingly angry as his stack of chips increasingly dwindles in size. That's why I can't gamble. Making matters worse for the man are the cheers of excitement coming from the nearby craps table, where it seems all of the luck that he has lost has somehow been transported. As the blackjack dealer once again reveals an ace and a king, another burst of noise comes from the craps game. Seven again, the croupier cries before placing a huge stack of chips in front of the young man playing craps who seemingly can't lose. The young man on the hot streak collects his winnings and walks happily through the crowded casino floor right past the fuming man at the blackjack table. Mm -hmm. The young man cashes in his chips and counts the large stack of $100 bills given to him before tipping one to the woman working inside the cage. And this night is far from a rarity for this young man. For his entire life, it's been as if he couldn't lose. He's not strong, fast, or especially smart, but he's always managed to excel thanks to his one incredible gift, his never-ending good luck. But is that a bad thing? I don't know. I would love to have never-ending luck. Like, damn, I wonder I'm gonna get that job. Hey, congratulations, you just got that job you always wanted. I don't know, would you really care if you didn't like really fail that much, like you didn't understand or uh, understand what it feels like to fail like would you even care i mean i don't think i would but i feel like failing also builds your character so i don't know it's, it's different i don't know let me know in the comment section what you think the young man soon recognized his ability to consistently beat games of chance and went to the one place in the world best suited for his skills las vegas and vegas has been very very good to him he lives in an expensive hotel room right on the strip drives fancy cars and treats himself nightly to lavish dinners and shows it's all possible because no matter what the game is, it's as if he can never lose. The young man is in the middle of another hot streak, or rather, continuing his never-ending hot streak, this time at the roulette table. How does he keep doing it? Someone in the crowd asks as the man hits another number straight up, paying out 37 to 1 on his bet. The crowd cheers and slaps the man on his back as a crowd is formed who are following along with his every bet, piggybacking on his luck as much as they can. The man is just about to place another large bet, when he's suddenly interrupted by a strong hand gripping his upper arm. The young man turns to find a large, toothy grin staring back at him. The smiling man continues to hold on to the young man's arm as he explains how impressed the casino is with his skill. He must be the luckiest man they've ever had the pleasure to have visited their casino. And the fact that he's been able to sustain that same run of luck night after night has been truly awe-inspiring. The young man thanks him for his kind words and tries to turn back to the table but finds that the man won't let go of his arm, gripping it even tighter now than before. We've been so impressed, in fact, the man tells him, that the owners of this casino have requested the chance to meet with you. The I've heard about this before. Um, I think it was a while back, a dude or somebody who it was, they got kicked out of the casino because they was winning too much or something like that. Sure, the young man tells him. Just let me grab my chips and... But the man begins to pull him away from the table, telling him that there's no need to worry. The casino will take care of his winnings. After all, we have cameras everywhere. Who would steal? The young man is soon pushed through a doorway into a space that looks like a police interrogation room with just a single table and a couple of chairs, and a hammer. one of which a small, older man is sitting in. The ex-boxer wrenches the young man's arm down onto the table and holds it in place there. The young man screams as the boxer grabs a hammer with his free hand and raises it into the air, ready to bring it down on the young man's fingers. Well, the old man sitting across from him asks, the young man has started to cry a little, but between whimpers, he manages to ask, well, what? The old man wants to know how the young man is cheating. No one wins the way he does, over and over, night after night, no matter the game. The young man insists that he isn't cheating. He's just lucky. 
He always has been, but the old man isn't buying it. He nods to the boxer, who raises the hammer up again, but still the young man doesn't admit to anything. I'm just lucky, I'm just lucky, he keeps repeating over and over in between sobs. The old man stands up and pats him on the shoulder. Maybe you are, he says, before slipping something into the man's pocket. The police then enter the room and immediately take a set of loaded dice from the same pocket. He's in real trouble now. Wow. The young man is shoved into a holding cell at the jail and looks around at the other men, wondering if his luck has finally run out. He squeezes in on one of the benches lining the wall and accidentally bumps the man sitting next to him, waking him up from his nap. The man is angry at having been disturbed, but grows even angrier when he realizes who just woke him. It's the man who seemed to take all the luck. The young man doesn't seem to have noticed that he's upset at him at all, though. Yeah, that's crazy, too, to think about, because a lot of times people get these huge wins. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, he's winning. Yeah, this is awesome. This is amazing. But at the same time, you got those one or two people like, damn, I haven't won all night, and I just lost my rent. Some people bet all their stuff, bro, and it's ridiculous how people can do that. The people gamble houses, cars, bro, all that stuff. And then you got those few people that's watching that, like, oh, okay, he's flashing his money. He think he's better than me. Now I'm about to go try to take the money that he just won because I didn't win anything. And that's just the way people are, bro. People see you doing so well, they get mad. Like, it's not my fault. Like, if I win, I win. If you lose, you lose, bro. What he has noticed is that there's a penny on the floor in front of him. The young man bends to pick it up just as the man next to him throws a haymaker. His fist slams into the wall right where the young man's head just was, shattering many of the bones in his hand. The young man jumps up with a fright and runs across the small cell as the other men being held also leap to their feet, some crying out in confusion, others cheering on the violence. <laughs> the young man cries out to the guards for help, but no one seems to be coming to his aid. He looks around the cell, but there's nowhere for him to hide. The angry man, now madder than ever with a hand that is rapidly turning purple and blue, approaches him. He lifts the young man up with his good hand, holding him in the air by his throat. I'm gonna kill you, the man cries before the door to the cell opens. The young man watches as the taser prongs fired by the jail guards appear on the man's chest, and he drops the young man to the floor before falling backwards from the 50,000 volts coursing through his body. The young man would learn the next day that the angry man was dead before he even hit the floor, the result of a congenital heart defect and a lot of bad luck. Yeah. The young man stands before a judge who is listing off the charges against him, which include cheating, a felony in this state that can result in a sentence of up to five years in prison. But this isn't your first offense, is it? The judge asks. The young man tries to explain that those previous times were all mistakes. He's never cheated in his life. But the judge doesn't want to hear it. The young man is sitting in the hallway outside the courtroom when his lawyer emerges from his meeting with the judge and prosecutor. Or are you a lucky guy? His lawyer tells him. He goes on to explain that even though the case against him is airtight, the charges are going to be dropped, provided he admits himself to a special program. The young man assumes it must be some kind of gambling addiction program. In no way is he addicted to gambling, but what choice does he have? It's either that or prison. The choice is easy. Choice is yours. As the young man exits the courthouse, he is approached by a man in a suit who leads him to a black van parked nearby. FBI. The young man is placed in the back and immediately notices that there is a cage separating the back from the front seat, like a prison transport van. The young man is growing nervous. Where are they taking him? This all seems like it's happening so fast. Can it even be legal? And what about his things that were taken at the jail? Excuse me. He asks the driver, what about my things? I don't even have my wallet. Don't worry about that. The man driving the van tells him, you won't need any of that anymore. You're D-class now. What does that mean? The man doesn't have any idea what that means, but he can tell it isn't good. Oh. His luck may have finally ran out. He's an SCP now. The young man who once lived the life of a professional Las Vegas gambler was given a new name, D-87465. But as you'll see, that name wouldn't last very long and soon would be known as SCP-181, or as the SCP Foundation staff like to refer to him, Lucky. SCP-181 was first noticed by the Foundation following his being arrested for repeatedly defrauding the Nevada Gaming Commission. He was originally made a member of the Foundation's Class D personnel, the guinea pigs of the SCP Foundation who are used for various tests with anomalies in order to better understand their properties. However, it soon became clear that the man's ability to consistently beat the odds had nothing to do with cheating. 
So it's had nothing to do with cheating. So my thing is, I wouldn't do it at casinos. Because like they said, even if you're not cheating, bro, if you win consecutively, you keep winning, you keep winning, you come back day after day, and you keep winning, bro, their their eyes are going to be on you, bro. That's why they got uh, cameras and stuff on every table so they can keep track of the uh, the dealers as well, the people that's playing the game. And if they see that you're winning constantly, bro, they're going to raise red flags 100%. They're going to either kick you out of the casino or they're going to pay you or they're just going to have you investigate like that one dude did. Probably be like, oh, he's cheating. But my what I would have done is if I'm lucky like that, just play the lottery. You can't say you cheat in the lottery. The numbers are randomized. So how can they say you're cheating? But I mean, that would just be me. That's what I would have did. I would just play scratchers and I would have just played the lottery because you can't say I'm cheating on a lottery because everything is randomized. In his first experiment, which took place at Armed Reliquary Containment Area 02, where he and several other Class Ds were exposed to an SCP that is known to incite extreme anger and murderous tendencies in those who come into contact with it, just as expected, one of the other D-Class members became enraged and began rampaging, killing all of the other Class Ds present, all except for one. Through what appeared to be a stroke of good luck, the frenzying D-Class seemed to miss D-87465, who had laid down on the ground amongst the other bodies and was playing dead. <laughs> An armed response team soon entered the experimentation cell and put down the rampaging D-Class, sparing D-87465. He was next submitted to a test with SCP-075, a creature that resembles a large snail with a muscular foot shaped like a six-fingered clawed hand. <laughs> SCP-075 is much heavier than its small size makes it seem like it should, weighing approximately 860 kilograms. Despite this, it is able to move at an extremely high speed, quickly leaping towards anyone who comes near it and spraying them with a deadly corrosive liquid. D-87465 was placed in a cell with SCP-075 as part of a test to measure its speed and reaction time. But despite SCP-075 having immediately killed all other prior D-classes during tests, D-87465 somehow managed to keep avoiding its leaping attacks. He was always able to guess which direction to move in order to dodge the deadly snail, huh. like a soccer goalie who always picks the right way to dive to stop penalty kicks. Having now survived not one, but two experiments that exposed him to Keter-class anomalies, researchers needed to find out if D-87465 was himself anomalous or simply a statistical anomaly. In order to test this, the D-class was placed in the containment cell of SCP-082, better known to most as Fernand the Cannibal, a grotesquely huge humanoid with ogre-like features who often dresses like a Victorian-era aristocrat and will regale his guests with outlandish stories before inevitably eating them. But there was something different about D-87465. After a full month of survival in 082's cell, a length of time that had resulted in all the previous test subjects being consumed, SCP researchers suspected that this D-class's <laughs> incredible ability to survive was much more than dumb luck. But they needed to test him even more to see if his powers extended beyond just the ability to survive. D-87465 was removed from regular D-class duties, and researchers began performing various tests on him, watching as he flipped a coin 50 times in a row, with it coming up heads every single time. Similar results occurred when they had him roll seven. pairs of dice that would always total up to seven, or when they had him pick random cards out of a deck, and he was able to pull all 13 hearts in a row. Foundation researchers were now convinced that this man was more than just lucky. He seemed to possess the ability to create an unnatural effect on probability. The researchers suspected that he was generating this effect without being aware of it. At this point, D-87465 was reclassified and given a new designation, SCP-181. Wow. Further testing confirmed that SCP-181 is able to affect causal probability and that it really does occur through no action of his own. However, there's more to SCP-181 than simply being lucky, as researchers soon found out. In an audit of death and injury rates at Bio Research Area 12, where SCP-181 is contained, it was discovered that both had increased dramatically in the time since he was brought there. It seems that SCP-181 doesn't simply create his own good luck. He, in some ways, saps it from others simply by being present. It now appears that every lucky moment he experiences results in the opposite happening to someone else. For every seven he rolls on a pair of dice, someone else gets snake eyes. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, okay, now I understand the power. I was kind of like getting to the point like, okay, maybe he's creating his own luck, you know, based off of his energy, he not really understanding it. Cause I say, you create your own positivity, you create your own whatever it is, it's your life. So I thought maybe he was creating his own luck and not going off of what science and all this other probability stuff is talking about. He created his own luck, but he was sapping energy from everybody else that was in the damn casino, bro. It's not fair. 
there. See, I, I would have wanted this power, but I don't want to take away from somebody else's luck. You get what I'm saying? Like, it sucks. That's just like saying, dang, I want that job. And then when you get there, you're the only one that hire, get hired. But the people around you was working to get that job for those four or five years. And then you take it from them because you sapped their luck away. That's messed up. I told you, I said it from the beginning of the video. I was like, it can't be he's just lucky. It got to be some kind of like string attached to it. Like, you can be lucky, but those around you are not going to have any luck at all. And that's just going to suck. Because I wouldn't want to see, I wouldn't want people to see me uh, happy and lucky all the time and they're always failing all the time you know what i'm saying it, it'll take a lot on you if you fail constantly over and over and over again that's why it's nice to have like a little balance you're going to fail at everything you try you're going to fail at least once twice maybe but it builds character so don't be too disappointed when you fail a lot and for every death defying escape he makes someone else must die there's no telling how far his ability might scale could he survive a nuclear blast and if he did what would be the result in order to even out the odds, so to speak? In light of these new discoveries, SCP-181 was removed from his low-level containment cell where he was allowed to occasionally interact with D-Class personnel for entertainment purposes and was moved to Site-27, where he was placed in solitary confinement and classified as safe. All interactions with staff are now limited to the bare minimum in order to ensure his survival and security without risking any events that might result in him getting lucky. Dang, that was a good video. This video was recognized by LOL guys, so I appreciate you sharing that. That was an interesting concept. I know a lot of the times on this channel, we look at SCPs and they're scary and they're killing people and you know, they're just doing outrageous stuff like little uh, Yule Man is like the little evil version of Santa Claus. But this one was kind of like a really like a blessing and a curse at the same time. Let me know down in the comment section, would you want to have this power? But at the same time, you would know that your luck causes other people's downfall. But this video was by Dr. Bob, so you guys had to read she's super super box. Cut the link and watch the video in entirety because I was pausing and stopping and talking through the whole thing. Thank you guys so much, man. Keep doing what you guys are doing and the videos will keep coming. But again, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.